Artastic Nation, Back to School is upon us or is already here, depending on where you live and what time of year you are watching this video. Here are my top 10 tips for back to school success. One, you need to get focused and plan ahead. Do not walk in school day one with no plan. Be like, all right guys, my name's blah, and uh, you guys can uh, get to know each other as play a game. Uh-uh, no way. Plan ahead, plan your first week and your first day. Make sure you know what you're going to teach and how you're going to teach it. Make sure you know if you're going to teach um, classroom routines and rules. Know which ones you're going to teach and what your routines and rules are specifically. You can't just show up, start teaching rules and routines without actually knowing what your rules and routines are because that would be cray cray. Okay, the kids would be like, <sighs> and you'd just be making up stuff randomly. Um, and yeah, you do actually have to teach these rules and routines because although you can't get upset at a kid for doing something that they didn't know they could or couldn't do. Right, so you gotta teach them. So plan ahead, know exactly what you're gonna do on that first day. Get focused, plan for success. Dream it, do it, win it, go. Okay, next one. Um, have your year long plan done in those couple, first couple weeks or beforehand, ideally. You need to have a year long plan. You need to know what you're going to do each month for each grade or class for the year. You do. You need to know what, where you're going. You have to have a plan for your journey. Okay? What I like to do is I like to just print off some month um, templates or just write on a page like October, November, December, grade one, grade four, grade eight, whatever. And then I'm going to write down the targets of the curricular content that I want to cover on those months. So if I'm teaching the element of line um, and exploring a range of mediums and materials in a collaborative way, if that's what my focus is in November, I'm going to write that target on October, on November, on that month. That's my target. Now I need to think of a unit to teach that's going to meet that target. And I'm going to plan that way. So I'm going to write down all the units. I'm not going to necessarily have the units actually created at the very beginning of the year. Don't have time for that. But I'm going to know exactly what units I'm going to teach each month and what curricular content I'm going to target. Now, if you want to be extra organized, print off your, your curriculum, whatever that might be, whether it's national um, art standards or if you teach... Um, the core curriculum. I live in a, I live in BC, so I don't <laughs> I teach something completely different. Um, whatever you might teach, print them off and then color code it easily. To take some felts, underline October month with orange. Look through your your curriculum. Underline the standards that you're going to teach in October in orange. Done. Then you put this with your year-long plan. Now you know what you're going to teach and when. And if anybody walks in your room and is like, okay, tell me what you're teaching this month or what are, what are you expect to teach or what are you teaching right now, show them. This is what I'm teaching. To make it even more obvious, write it on your whiteboard for both you to know, for your principal to know, for the parents to know, for the kids to know. Everybody needs to know what you're teaching. Okay? So have that done. Okay, next one. No, so number three is to know your classroom and rules and routines before you teach them. So I talked a bit about talked a bit about this already. You need to know what rules and routines and procedures that are in your classroom before you teach them. So right now, write them down. Write them down. Write them down. Write down your classroom rules. Write down the routines you want to teach. Write down the procedures you want to teach. And if you want to be even more organized, write down on what days for what class you're going to teach them. Not all at the same time. Okay, day one for grade ones, I'm going to teach this. Or grade eights, I'm going to teach this routine or procedure on Thursday. Okay, so that way you know. And then you can just photocopy it and stick that routine on that day plan so you know what you're doing when you teach it. Okay, number four is to use the same mediums throughout all your classes. 
when you're doing an art project, yes, all your art projects can be different. So they can all, you have lots of classes. All the art projects should be, you know, different for all the different kids and all the different ages. That being said, try the best you can to work with the same mediums or materials for all your classes. So even though the project is different, everybody's doing oil pastel and watercolor paint, or everybody's doing clay, or everybody's exploring watercolor techniques in watercolor, or everybody's exploring pencil crowns, everybody's exploring ink. Whatever it is, try and keep the, me the medium the same because then you save a lot of time on cleanup, prep, Changing out art caddies, you can eliminate most of that because you can just basically just have kids take it to the back table or somewhere um, so that way the custodians can clean, but it's essentially the same materials coming back um, through all your classes. And it can just stay out. You're not prepping for every single different class, different mediums and materials. Okay? Um, number five is use table caddies. Um, put all your supplies that have all the mediums and materials ready for the course or that class pre-prepped in a caddy so that way it's just ready to go a table leader can go grab it done You're, you don't have to sit there and try to organize as the class is going you don't have time to do that okay so have table caddies um, if you don't have a budget to buy those really fancy $15 ones or whatever if you can't find any at dollar stores sometimes you can I think I've heard that you guys, if you live in the United States, have some pretty crazy dollar stores or targets. We don't got that as much. I mean, I have some cool dollar stores, but I feel like yours are on a whole other level. Anyways, so, <laughs> and we don't have Target. <laughs> so, <laughs> get some table caddies. What I did when I had no budget and it was just coming out of my pocket um, the first year, and I still use these to be honest, as I just went and got went to Dollar Tree and they didn't have caddies at the time um, but they did have microwave lids and I just used them upside down and they came in the rainbow colors so you know I have all the colors of the rainbow in microwave lids and then I just got some cheap little containers and I still have the same wax crayons and stuff in them so I had, at the time I had wax crayons and oil pastels and chalk pastels or I would prep them with like paint, paint brushes, scrap paper bits, whatever I might want to do, I load it up in the, um, in my little containers and in my microwave lids. Nobody knows of the microwave lids, and they've lasted, like, almost 10 years now. So that's pretty good for a microwave lid that kids, like, carry around and, like, abuse. That's pretty good, I'm just saying. So if you can find a caddy or you can't afford it this year, just get a microwave lid, flip it upside down, nobody will know. That's what I did. Okay, so get a table caddy. I highly suggest it. Keeps you organized, keeps everybody organized. Your life will be like, whew, solved. Okay, next six is to teach your kids some growth mindset. Oh my gosh. How many times have you heard the phrase, I can't draw? I can't do art. I'm not doing this. I can't do it. I'm not an artist. You can even hear adults do that in the staff room. Oh, must be so nice being able to draw. I can't draw. I'm not an artist. No, you have no growth mindset is what you don't have. Nobody's born like NBA star playing basketball. Or like, I wasn't born drawing. I just do a lot of drawing. And I do a lot of ceramics. And I do a lot of making art resources for kids. So, I can do that well. However, can I dribble a basketball really well? Probably not. I don't even know how to play soccer. I don't. I don't go around going, I, you must be so nice that you can play soccer. I can't play soccer. I don't have that talent. I don't have that ability. No. I just haven't, I just don't, don't know how to do it yet because I never tried. So, teaching your kids growth mindset is actually going to change their, the way they think. They just can't do it yet. If I try, if I put in effort, if I put in the hard work, I'm slowly going to get better. Mistakes help me learn. It's okay to make mistakes. My teacher knows that I'm going to make a mistake. I don't have to worry because she knows and tells us that mistakes help us learn. Okay, so have a growth mindset classroom this year. And if you don't know what growth mindset is, look it up. I even have a YouTube, YouTube, YouTube video on um, growth mindset. 
last year in my classroom I had a child who, used to, who called it YouTube YubaTube, and sometimes it just gets stuck in my head. So cute. Anyways, YubaTube. Eh, I love it. Alright, so, <laughs> one day he's going to see this video and just be happy. Alright, so teach growth mindset to your kids. Next is, number seven, is teach mindfulness in your art classroom. Oh my gosh. Mindfulness is a sort is a type of meditation. It makes you, um, it teaches you to forget about the past because the past has already happened. To not worry about the future because the future hasn't happened yet. Just to focus yourself and your thoughts on the moment, on the present. We're not worrying about anything else. We're just thinking about what our, um, what's going through our head, what our body feels like, blah, 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 blah. We're taking deep breaths in and out. Deep breath in and out. You might be wondering how this connects to an art classroom. It does. You can stop your class anytime that they feel like they're getting a little bit out of control and just take a mindful moment with them. Just stop them. All right, guys, we need to refocus our bodies and our minds on the present moment because all of us are getting into the yellow zone. We're looking really excited or blah, blah, blah. And then you can do one of those. You can even turn it into like an art prompt where you um, you can write down like a little script. All right. I want you to visualize that you are sitting in a field and around you all you see is green, blah, 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 blah. Then something comes into view. I want you to begin to draw what you see coming into view. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now the vision changes and it begins to swirl. And as this happens, you're swirling with mediums and materials too, whatever it might be. You can do mindfulness um, as part of art. Okay, so encouraging you to do that. You can also just do um, play Zen music afterwards and mindful music while they do work time or while they're working in their sketchbooks. Because if you think about it, creating art is being aware of yourself. It's self-awareness. It's understanding yourself. It's being present in the moment so that you can create real art. Not just, like, yes, directed drawings and all those kinds of things, but eventually, at the high school level, they're creating art. And you have to be present for that. So teach mindfulness. All right. So next one doo, 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 is... Good Lord, I can't read my notes anymore. Is it on? Oh, yeah. I don't have my glasses on. Class mascot. You should totally have a class mascot in your room. Now, I love Beanie Boos. So in my room, I have Beanie Boos. And every year I get a new Beanie Boo. That's the new mascot. And our Beanie Boo is... Like the item we hold when it's our turn to talk at circle time when we're doing one of those get to know you's or community builders throughout the year. Um, the kids love our mascot. The mascot might do things in the room like an elf at Christmas and will participate in elf activities or be the elf when you have like elf on the shelf things going on. Okay, so have a class mascot. You can stick them on their whiteboard if like the class is left a total disaster and have like a little speech bubble drawn out like oh my god guys this room looks horrible i can't believe it i couldn't find my bed last night whatever okay so have a class mascot i totally encourage it to you um see if you can find some that are like art mediums i'm sure amazon has something or like rainbow themed maybe a llama llamas are pretty cool right now so maybe get a llama whatever all right, so number nine is to take time for yourself. You cannot be a teacher if you don't look after you. So you need to think about your body and mind as well, because remember our body and our mind, our physical health and our mental health are all connected. And if we're feeling stressed out, our body's going to respond to that or anxious. So you need to make sure that you are doing mindfulness in your own life. You need to do deep breathing. So teaching mindfulness in your classroom also gives you a moment to calm down and meditate and take deep breaths too. So that way your day is not super stressful. That's also a reason to be doing it. You need to be making sure that you're staying healthy at home. Make sure you take care of your body. Get some exercise. Do things that make you happy. Go on walks. Take time to create art. Take time to Netflix. 
play video games, read a book, whatever it is, you cannot be a teacher 24-7 because you're going to burn out. You need to go home uh, sometime after the bell, hopefully shortly after the bell. I know it's hard, but the classroom will be there tomorrow for eating for you, and you can finish some things tomorrow, but you cannot do that if you are burnt out and overworked. You can't. It's impossible. I used to stay my first year, like one time I was there like 7 o'clock at night making sketchbooks. Like, I was so burnt out at the end of the year. I don't do that anymore. I go in early and I leave a little bit after the bellish, something like that. But I go in quite a little. I go in, I go in hours early, I'll be honest. Hours. So really I'm just shifting my day around from other people. <laughs> but um, you need to make do do something for you to make you happy too, and take time for yourself, and worry about your health, and eat eat good, get physical exercise. That's more of a note to myself because it's really I just I honestly sit down a lot of the time. So <laughs> I'm trying to be healthy, and this is also why I'm encouraging you because we all have to make sure we take time for ourselves during the year. And I'm trying to start that new habit now okay and last is um this back to school try reading art books to your kids some art themed books so there are there is a ton there's the girl who never made mistakes that's a good one the most magnificent thing another great book the dot by peter reynolds and sky color and ish creating ish art oh it's just a it's just ish right flower ish i don't have to worry all right, so there's those. Um, there's what to do with a problem. There's um, what to do with an idea. Uh, all kinds of books. Um, so take a look around. Uh, Beautiful Oops. And I think there's a new one called Mixed or Mixed Colors or something to do with that, which is, I think, a primary one, but might be really good if you're introducing mixing colors. Um, primary colors and secondary colors with your Ks and Ones. That might be a really good book to use. I think that's a new one that's, I well, I could be wrong, but I've just noticed it, so it's new to me. Um, I, I think all these are on net, on uh, Amazon, and then if you get them in paperback, of course, there's always that option, and it's always significantly cheaper if you can't afford to get the hardcover, because, yeah, those books add up real fast into the hundreds. I know that, so just get the paperbacks. So the kids are not going to know it's the story they care about and the concept that you're teaching them, okay? So that's my 10 tips for back to school for your art classroom. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this artastic channel for more blog posts um, about, for sorry, for first year art teachers, how to get my new online course. Um, and some other ideas for back to school, please check out my blog at MsArtastic.com. As well, um, for art tutorials, please head on over to my Teachers Pay Teachers store, where I, where I have over 400 art tutorials and resources for art teachers ready to go in your classroom to help you plan your year, sorry, very instantly. All right? You have an Artastic day.